You are not going to believe the amount of people it takes for buyers and sellers to be successful in their home purchase and sale with today's marketplace. Hey, I'm Scott. And I'm Lane, and we are back with this week's Orange County Real Estate Beat. And yes, we're going to be talking about who all is involved when it comes to a real estate transaction. And to coin an off-use phrase, it really, really takes a village. We've counted out, and we know it takes at least 20 people to be on your team to help the buyers and sellers today complete their transaction. And that's just scratching the surface. I'm guessing it's closer to 30 by the end of the day. Could be. And we can talk about why it could be closer to 30. Yeah. Let's start. We'll go slow. Okay. So you have the sellers. And you've got the buyers. That's the buyers. And you cannot have facilitated real estate transaction without those two people. And even though, you know, there might be, you know, married couple or a family selling it, we're going to count them as just separate parties. So that counts as two. Absolutely. Okay. You and, have... And in most transactions, you're going to have the listing agent who's the seller's representative and a buyer's agent who's the buyer's representative. That's correct. And each representative, like agent, will usually have a transaction coordinator. So that's two more right there. And let's talk about transaction coordinators for a little bit. Things have changed a lot since I got into the business back in 1981. And that is the fact that the complication complicated nature of real estate transactions today dictates the fact that there's a dedicated person that handles all the minutia. It's not minutia because it's very important. It's the ins and outs of the administrative ends of the transactions. And most real estate brokerages require that their agents do use the services of a transaction coordinator. That's right. That's right. Now, in addition to a transaction coordinator, there's a reason why 10% of the real estate agents out there do more than 90% of the business. Absolutely. Okay. And they're busy because they're taking on the business. And the gap is actually kind of expanding because a lot of uh, sellers out there, they want the most for their money. They want the most for their investment. And they're actually finally hiring the right people to get it done. But because they're so busy, each agent has a, has an assistant as well. Exactly. And the, you know, the, the best buying and selling agents out there know where their highest and best use of time is. And that's interfacing with their clients, helping negotiate prices, helping negotiate repairs, navigating the ups and downs of the transaction. And they need these support teams to handle all of these other factors that we've talked about. So as Lane mentioned, your listing agent and your buying agent is also going to have their personal assistant that is the liaison to the transaction coordinator and to the other parts and pieces of the transaction puzzle. So we're up to eight people and we haven't gotten to the lender yet. So we have a lender or mortgage broker that makes nine. Then the, then there that team has a loan processor and then that team also usually has an assistant. So that'll get us, what, now to 11 people? Exactly. And again, these are more behind the scenes people. But again, just like the real estate... Uh, Agents need their support staff behind them. So does your lender or your mortgage broker. The processor is the one that's collecting all of the data, verifying the accuracy of it, and then preparing everything for final submission to the underwriting process. The assistant, again, acts as a right hand to that lender or mortgage broker. All of these people will be interacting with the actual consumer, the buyer or the seller, believe it or not. Now, I don't care if you're buying a home, getting a loan, or you're buying a home all cash, but, but chances are, as a buyer, you're going to need a home inspector. And then if you're buying a home in California, chances are you're going to have a termite inspection done. So you're going to need a termite inspector. And then that puts us at what number is that? 13 right uh, there? Yes. Okay. Now let's talk about the representatives for the reports needed to buy a home. Okay. Let's so do it. you need a um, natural hazard disclosure report. So those reports tell you if you're in a flood zone, earthquake zone, seismic hazard zones, those type of reports. So there's a representative helping you and making sure that that report gets ordered. That's correct. And then we're also going to have the uh, home warranty representative. Most transactions today will involve a seller's home warranty. This is a plan that's customarily paid for by the seller, but to benefit the buyer and covers all the major systems of the house, plumbing, heating, electrical, and safety for the first year of the trans after the transaction closes. And there's a representative that facilitates putting that contract together with any specific options, such as uh, air conditioning, washer dryers, etc. And that warranty representative is a crucial part of the puzzle if there happens to be a claim after that transaction closes. Yep, and we have escrows here in California. So you're gonna have an escrow officer and then most escrow officers have an escrow officer's assistant. That's right. And escrow again is the neutral, escrow is the process from when contract is signed until you close and uh, titles recorded in your name. The escrow period is that time that it takes to do that. And the escrow companies are a neutral third party in California that take their direction directly from the buyers and the sellers and then create that set of escrow documents or the rules of the road, if you will, right at the beginning of the transaction. They're also the repositories. They work with the title company. Money is wired into the escrow companies for initial deposit deposits, final down payments, et cetera. And they work very closely with the title companies, which we'll get to next. 
Yeah. So yeah, there you go. You have your title officer, your closing <laughs> officer there. That's one. They usually have an assistant there. That's another one. And so that brings us to 19. Okay. So we're getting close to 20. Absolutely. The reason why we're going to say it takes about 19 or 20 minimum to close is because we don't know if you're going to need other service providers That's after right. that. But maybe you need a handyman. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need an electrician. Maybe you need a plumber. Maybe you need a contractor. Maybe, who knows what you need as far as the course of escrow to get something closed because buyers do ask for repairs to be done. And let's talk about what leads to those repairs, and that is generally more inspections. So depending on where the house is located, your general home inspector is going to recommend specialists to come in and take care of some other areas. For example, you're located on a hillside. You may need to have a geologic engineer take a look at something to see how the stability of, of a slope is. Very, very common, especially in southern Orange County where we have a lot, of, a lot of hillsides. Also, we see in some of our older homes, it's very common on a home inspection, something will be called out in the masonry, which is the bricks in the chimney. There, believe it or not, are chimney specialists. There are also chimney sweeps out there that work on the insides of the chimneys. We'll see on home inspections that there's a buildup of soot and creosote and things like that. So again, I can think off the top of my head, another probably half a dozen to 10 different specialist That's right. investigators that might need to be called out to help the buyer get their due diligence done and also educate the seller. Oftentimes, the seller doesn't realize some of these things that are going on with their home, and they want those taken care of to transfer title with a clear head. Yeah, because I guarantee you, if the home inspector says that the roof looks a little worn out, I'm getting somebody to check out the roof. Roof inspector, there it goes. So again, we're, we're already getting, I think, up past 25 now. Yeah, so in closing, let's recap this. So we're going to recap the first 19 okay so you have the sellers the buyers the listing agent the buyer's agent the transaction coordinator for the seller the transaction coordinator for the buyer you have the listing agent's assistant the buyer's agent's assistant so loan officer or mortgage broker you have the loan processor the assistant for the lending team you have the home inspector the termite inspector home warranty representative the natural hazard disclosure representative the escrow officer the escrow officer's assistant the title officer the title officer's assistant and then anybody else who you need to help oh close throughout there and this has been so rapid fire. All of a sudden, while Lane was doing that, I had the vision of the old-fashioned crew team in college. Everybody is sitting in the boat. Everyone is manning or womaning an oar. And then you've got the guy standing in the back with the megaphone. I see us as the agents. We're the guy or gal in the back with the megaphone, making sure that everybody rows in unison yeah. to get us to the end of the row, race. Row, row, row. <laughs> well... <laughs> That's what it is. So that, that's, our, that's our video for today. Hopefully you find that valuable. There, It does take a village that Scott alluded to earlier, um, but those are the people that are involved in a real estate transaction. Thanks so much for watching today. And again, we just want to provide value at all times. We really appreciate your viewership and we want to hear your comments and tell, find out how we can make these better and more informative for you. See you next week. Bye.